Fat Force Radio. Fat Force Radio is rated M for mature. Or should that be immature? Hey guys, Dustin Wynn. Hey, this is Scott Snyder. This is Paul Dini. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio. You're listening to Bat Force Radio. This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Bat Force Radio, the Batman and DC podcast with no limits. At the time of recording, we are, what, on day two of the release of the Snyder Cut, Zack Snyder's Justice League, the one we've all been waiting for. And it's a a lot of carrots in this stew to talk about the movie here tonight. We've got making his triumphant return just for this special occasion, Arkham Asylum LPC. Oh, shit. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We've got the Bat Force Times. Hello. Oh. You are excited. The Trunker himself <laughs> is here. What's going on? Bat Force Tom. Booyah. The Grumpler. Uh, boo. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that shout out. <laughs> Tease us. Believe us. Grandpa Batman. Can I get you an appetizer? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Captain Crunch. And I'm Robin Cross. And yeah, as I said, we have all had at least one viewing of the Snyder Cut now, and we're just going to hammer through. Uh, we, we've made a, a sort of list that we'll try to stick to. We probably won't stick to it, but uh, we're just going to get all our thoughts out, and uh, maybe you guys can hit us up on Instagram or email or something and let us know what you think. Uh, but uh, where are we going to start with this? I think uh, <clears throat> a good place to start is uh, getting everybody's um, hype level going in. Uh, mm. So to see, like, everyone, I think, r- whether you're listening to it or not, I think had uh, their own, like, they, they were excited or, man, they've been hearing about this for way too long, just let it die. So what's everyone's hype level going in? I, I want to start with, uh, I think the best place to start is with the Grumpler. I love going with the Grumpler. <laughs> <by> <laughs> uh, 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 I, I wouldn't even call it a hype level. Like, a curiosity level was super high. Like, I... I I was like one, like man, just let this die and let's move on from it, which is kind of where I am right now. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was late, curious, bro. Like, I was, I was thinking, this is how much different could it be? I was thinking it's, it's got to be like more of the same, you know. But um, you know, uh, it, it clearly wasn't, you know. So, All right. oh shit, yeah. legends. Maybe a one or a two. Really. And I'll tell you why. Even though I love Zack Snyder and I love all of his movies. And initially, a couple of years ago, I was totally with this Snyder Cut movement. Um, I started losing interest when they kept revealing more stuff that was going to be in the film. Like when they added Jared Leto and they were bringing in Deathstroke and they were bringing in like all these additional characters. I felt like Zack was just trying to uh do too much with it that i felt like he was doing the original version i felt like he was trying to like throw more pieces into the pot and i didn't know if it was gonna flow well right um so i felt that that kind of turned me off a bit um so i was just lowered my expectations to one or two and then just kind of uh watch it and see what happens sort of attitude yeah okay so you were at so you were at a one or a two, all right. So like you were just that's kind of like the best place to be at to be honest. Like I'm not giving a fuck really. I mean, I was excited. I'm excited because it's a it's a new film, but my expectations were low. Still, I think a good place to be. Um, Teases, believe him. Um, yeah, I think hype levels were definitely above. Um, you know, this is something that we've been waiting for for years. So. Just the second it started, I was glued to it. Um, 
down, you know, d- down to the fact that the light once the, once I saw the lighting was changed, my hype level just adjusted quickly because I knew this was going to be a, a new film. So, yeah, um, me personally, I uh, had been sending Zaddy nudes since uh, before uh, I want to say 2019. I hadn't heard back yet, but that's how excited I was. <laughs> you you weren't excited about this at all, were you, Tom? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Zero interest from you, right? S- significantly oh, less excited when you found out that wasn't actually Zaddy you were sending photos to. <laughs> oh, shit. Someone, someone's got some blackmail <laughs> on, on Z- a Zaddy cosplayer. He's just sending appetizers to the wrong Zaddy. Yeah. The, I, I think, like, my, my nips had been hard ever since he started sharing, like, uh, pictures on Vero, and little by little you see <laughs> all, the, uh, all the little... All the little Remember. details that we didn't get. So, hey, 300, people, <laughs> 300 people have already stopped listening because we've said that. <laughs> I, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't get to the to the level of like sending death threats to anybody yet. I almost did, but I was pretty excited. Hmm. I for me, it was basically the closer it got, the. I guess if I can say excited, but I, I might just go with more interested. You know, like I, I was definitely ready for it to happen. We had spent so many, It's it has literally been years. We had seen all of the trailers and TV spots and all this stuff that showed footage that we never saw in a movie. So it, it was great to finally see that stuff that That's we true. thought we were going to see three years ago. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Gramps, hype level. <laughs> well, kind of lo- kind of like what um, you guys have said. I-, I really wouldn't say I was like, you know, going all hype, super excited. I was really more intrigued about because, you know, I didn't know what parts in the original film were actually Snyder versus Whedon. It- I mean, I know that uh, like the opening scene where Batman meets that parademon, that was written by Josh Whedon. Um, so I didn't expect that to be in this movie, but the rest of it, I didn't know. So I was really intrigued to know how this was going to be a different movie. And it was basically a, a completely different movie. And it also fleshed out a lot of backstory that was missing before. I mean, the original film, it was just like, you know, big bad guy shows up and starts killing Amazon. Well, where'd he come from? And then why is he chasing these people? And, you know, unless you, you know, were ingrained in, in Jack Kirby, you didn't know anything about these characters and stuff like that. And so this one really filled in the gaps and gave you some uh, meat to chew on about the entire story. And also we'll get to it later, but <clears throat> you know, I did go to that exhibit in downtown Dallas, um, that the Jared Leto exhibit, right? Yeah, the the, the, <laughs> the Church of Fraud exhibit. <laughs> but <clears throat> it had a wall panel in the middle of the exhibit that they wouldn't let me take photos of. I I, I managed to sneak in like three photos, but they had like security all around watching everyone that was there. Um, <clears throat> but it laid out the original. 2015 pitch that Zack Snyder and I think the other uh, writers took to Warner Brothers to create this Justice League. And it wasn't just this movie Justice League. It was an entire like trilogy or more. And so this wall was like front and back about eight panels of just complex in-depth story and plot that this justice league movie literally was only like an eighth of the entire pitch this is just a small morsel of what they intended to make if they got the approval to go forward with making sequels so i was really interested to see how much of that uh, wall the story that i read in the wall was in this film hmm. Hmm. tbt hype level times uh I, I wasn't i didn't allow myself to get hyped 
for this even after it was announced because movie because I know I'm gonna be waiting a long time and it's gonna feel longer if I get hyped, but I'm just not thinking about it. I didn't start I didn't allow myself to start to get hyped for it until the day before the movie and Colt gave me a code for HBO Max that didn't work and then I was like, Oh fuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then I so then I subscribed once I was subscribed and logged in, then I started getting hyped. And then the next, uh, I watched like the first hour because it started at three a.m. in the East Coast, so I just did the first hour. Okay, I couldn't. And um, the first five ten minutes in, I was like, "This is what it should have been." So that's that's when I allowed myself to get excited about this, and um, and it, I, I I enjoy. I think I enjoyed it more doing it that way. So that was for me. So. Mm. Yeah. Trunkler. Yeah, um, probably the same as m- m- most of what everyone else said. Um, um, I'd say the hype level started as it got closer. You know, went from a six because I was trying to keep it down and not get too excited. But um, definitely as, um, you know, again, what were we getting uh, before pictures, before any trailers came out? You know, when the first Justice League trailers came out, uh, was it back in 17? Um, now, obviously, there were stuff in the trailers that they didn't have in the movie, so I thought, okay, well, what are they going to do? They're going to ter- um, change a couple things. They're going to add the clips that they didn't actually show in the theaters. Um, but uh, as it got closer, you know, yeah, I started getting, you know, seeing the trailers, seeing the pictures. Of, um, definitely got more excited, more curious on what we're going to be seeing. Um, and you know I me, mean? I try and go in. I try not to get my hopes up too high because I don't want to, you know, quote unquote be d- let down or disappointed by me hoping that's gonna be one thing and you know it doesn't live up to my own self um mm-hmm. expect, give you know, it a I, chance bro yeah you're willing to give it a chance weren't you <laughs> yeah hey you know what <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah I mean like was it probably in the third first thirty minutes uh it was like yeah this is can we just erase uh the Whedon version so Oh yeah, nice. Um, def- definitely, um, love what we got. So, we'll uh, speaking of uh, getting rid of the the Whedon version, I saw Grumps post someone's video in his story. Uh, they had uh, the Hallelujah song playing, and they pulled the uh, the Justice League <laughs> off their uh, off their shelf, and walked yeah. into the kitchen, and dropped it in the garbage. Yeah, it's a good place for it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> LPC, where was your hype level? I'll switch it up, man. I was super hyped. Because I remember around that time, 2017, Suicide Squad, all that shit was like scotch taped together, dude. And you're like, this isn't what it's supposed to be a lot of the time, you know? So there's a lot of promise of those movies that just, unfortunately, the wind got taken out of the sails. So um, same thing with Batman vs. Superman. There was like the regular cut they showed in theaters, and then we got the advanced or ultimate cut. And you're like, damn, this is leagues better with like all that extra content and like world building, you know? Yeah. Um, exactly. So I was hyped, and then I got HBO Max, and then you know that got cut down with like Justice League Dark and everything else. I like I watched and caught up on that I never seen before. So shout out to HBO Max. Oh my but, god! Uh, <laughs> but I saw you know Subway getting behind the movement for the Snyder cut. And I, was, <laughs> yes, I started getting more hype about it, man. So I was ready for this. Subway, cool. Subway getting hyped back in 2019, or was it? Yeah, that was like last year or the year before when they got involved. Well, what, what's the odds of us playing a part in this all coming to fruition? Well, at the very least with Subway, the way legend has it is that uh, <laughs> this, this was when Snyder had tweeted out a picture of his quote-unquote assembly cut, which was 214 minutes long, to mm. prove to the Snyder haters that his cut did exist. So that went crazy on the internet, and so... We took that picture and we posted it to our Instagram and we said, um, we said Snyder cut, assembly cut, subway cold cut combo. We want all of it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and somehow, somehow the intern that runs the subway Instagram saw that and responded back by saying, we want the hashtag Snyder cut too. And that was like, what the fuck? So we took that. <laughs> screenshotted that, posted that, said that, like, oh, Subway's getting in on the game. Someone posted that to Twitter, 
and said, uh, it was like a, a retweet, the Snyder Cut movement Twitter said, we challenge Subway to donate 10,000 sandwiches to charity, like in the name of Snyder Cut. Subway <laughs> fucking saw that and said, if you get however many retweets, we'll do it. They got that many retweets on the tweet. Subway said, okay, we'll do it. Snyder saw that, and Snyder took a selfie in front of a Subway <laughs> saying, <laughs> saying the official Snyder Cut sandwich would be all meat, no cheese, no bologna. Nice. <laughs> and, then, and then the internet just started going and taking selfies of themselves at Subway eating Snyder Cut sandwiches. <laughs> so, that, I mean, yeah, that was fucking crazy to see. Oh, bad, so, bad floor. I love it. Uh, Grumps, when did you realize this is a completely different movie? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes in, like, this is completely different, you know. And uh, early on, like, I was hooked on, um, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of, I guess, Snyder's aesthetic, but, you know, I liked the, the other movies. Um, but it, it just, like, the aesthetic carried over from Man of Steel, BVS, and Justice League. Now, now I'm watching the same thing, as opposed to you know the the Justice League you know record scratch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Robin, when did you start? When did you notice like major differences? Well, the the one thing that, uh, like Grumps was just saying, the one thing that ties the the Snyder movies together, not just how it's you know the the tone is the same but what we had like when when you start watching bvs it begins with the end of man of steel and then this one began with the end of bvs and we saw a different uh, like like at the beginning of bvs uh we saw the end of man of steel from a different perspective mm -hmm. we saw many different perspectives of the end of bvs at the beginning of of this Justice League. So we saw the effect, you know, the shockwaves of Superman's death scream going across the world and across the universe. We see, you know, see how it's waking up the, the mother boxes and then how from there it goes straight into more stuff we hadn't seen. We get those really cin cinematic uh, scenes like uh, Lois walking through the rain and like that doesn't look like it's a comic book movie. That just looks like it's some some film, you know, like any any proper film, you know, not what people would expect from a, from a comic book movie, and especially a movie from someone who gets as much flack for their movies as that does. As soon as the credits started rolling and they showed Superman dying at the end of BBS and they had that kind of recap, I knew it was a different film right there. Yeah. Yep, it's a good point. They're the overlay with uh, there's a constant thread now from Man of Steel all the way to Justice League now, with the way it interweaves the ending and the beginning. Uh, teases, when did you start noticing differences? Um, I mean, immediately with like, like Robin said, like the death cry or the hallows of Superman as it kind of enters like different realms. Uh, to me, that was like that really set the tone and it was like really powerful. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much just all throughout that. And then I guess once they were um, that one scene with like all the Amazonians, mm -hmm. um, that kind of felt like kind of had like 300 vibes. You know, they started really kind of uh, playing with the cinematics and it was really dramatic and dark. And to me, I was like, wow, th at this point, this is completely a fresh start. And. It was great, you know. I, I was kind of blown away just by that scene. It kind of set the tone, so. For sure. Gramps. Um, the first slow motion sequence. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, for real, though, um, because it just had a, a heavier weight and tone to it where it wasn't just some Cracker Jack, Cracker Jack, um, Marvel-esque comedy movie, you know, slapstick comedy unnecessarily interjected into the the movie. Um, yeah, there was 
a little bit of comedy with with the Flash and Barry Allen, but this movie, you know, it had a a weight to it, you know. And uh, I was while I was watching it, I was like, this is almost feels like this is an art movie that just has superheroes in it, because Snyder, you know, he he likes to reference, you know, different things with literature and biblical references and you know theology and and all these um themes into his movies you know there's easter eggs if you look on the internet there's people that have actually spent time finding easter eggs and all sorts of things and and there's a lot of thought process in in how snyder built this movie just like what he did with you know the other ones and you know took references directly from the comics which is always you know appreciated um so yeah i mean like you guys said from the very beginning first scene totally different and it gives um you know a little bit more weight and and depth to to the story i i just wanted to add one quick thing to what gramps was saying it did feel like an art film because i felt like those chapter intermissions really kind of just took away from the whole realm of it being a superhero movie. Like, yeah, I love the chapter, right? That, that was such a nice change of pace and it kind of just helped flow and it really kind of just helped you imagine just this as a book, you know, like, or or some kind of play, you know, like it was very dramatic. So, and obviously it was a smart move, you know, they knowing that this was a four hour film, you know, someone may not want to watch it all at the same time. So they're like, well, what chapter did I leave on? Okay. Chapter three, I can go right. start on chapter four, but yeah, I, I love the, the little chapter intermissions and each one had its own title. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was different. TBT times. When did you start noticing differences? Um, well, there's a bunch, but right. The ones that hit me the most where I just felt really good about this movie again, where one where he goes to see Arthur Curry, right? And when Batman goes to see Aquaman, and um, they took out that the horrendous fish joke. Oh, oh yeah. I heard you talk to fish, <laughs> right? So to see them extract that garbage, it's like it, I, I guess that's like getting like the the shit sucked out of a sister lump or something right like th- that relief you get yeah, after they, they, they dr pimple popper uh, yeah like that. they <laughs> like they, like that that's that relief it, it felt like a, a good serious film again not some stupid shit and then so they when they took those jokes out and then when that the village the people in the village started singing in that icelandic language or whatever yeah. that northern that 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 weight see i like his aesthetic i, I like he has a very artful way about him rooted in culture and history so it's like to see things like that injected into this movie again i feel makes you take the dc characters even more serious because i feel like marvel characters are more fun and bubblegum and colorful and up up in a way whereas dc characters are like gods and i feel like let's have that balance i like they should be in a movie with weight and meaning and profound moments that and when the music was changed in the scene where Diana uh, fights off those terrorists in the museum, when she's on that, I, don't, I forgot what she's standing on in the first scene. Is it a scale that, or, something? or something? And yeah. I think originally they, they did a little like her theme song, which is cool, but the music was more profound than that in that introduction of her visually, where I, I the, the, the movie just, it was more compelling this time around, you know? I didn't like. For, for the record, I, I just want to set this for the record in front of the the cabinet. Uh, Le- Legends of Lego Batman loved the Whedon ver- the Whedon cut, and he did it. So I don't think he voted for the Scott Snyder stimulus package for this one. So I just want to just want to throw that out there. Um, yeah. I I do like that you pointed out the uh, the song that uh, the people are singing. Uh, you know, I had to go look that up because that's the thing that I do. So yeah. that is actually a, a traditional Icelandic song. Uh, it's very old. It's been covered by uh, by people like Bjork and things like that. But I had to look it up and I had to you know find the translation. So it's uh, it's basically a song they're singing for Arthur because of what he means to them. 
Yeah. So just to give an example, one of the parts of the song is uh, roughly translated to English. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure something is lost in the translation, but uh, one of the parts of it is, it has been long since I've seen him, his beauty was true, everything that can be good about one man, all he had. So mm. it's it's a song that they are singing to him because of everything that, that he provides for them. Like that, that's how important he is to those people. Mm. We gotta sing that for Zaddy. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes ten more people stop listening because he said. <laughs> I, I just I just love how it pisses off so many people. Yeah, like, it's because yeah. it's it, it, that's why I do it because I'm like you know what, there's so many people out there who gave this man so much shit, especially even after his daughter committed suicide, mm-hmm. and I and people are like. He doesn't understand the characters. He doesn't respect the characters. I'm like, man, this this guy is putting 150 percent to these characters. And if it's over your head, then it's over your head. But I'm I'm very relieved that he was able to finish his trilogy the way he did. I think I think that's uh that's very important. So we got to learn that Icelandic language. There's uh, <laughs> in some of those scenes specifically that that scene where he's recruiting Aquaman. Um, that whole scene was reshot by Whedon in blue screen um and you could totally tell when when arthur's in the water swimming away it's all fake blue screen in the background or green screen whatever that was another cool moment yeah you didn't see him swim away that you just so like yeah he he batman batman yeah (laughs) yeah that was kind of it, it, it uh it kind of you know you behind him is an actual like cove with a mountain range you know on the other side of the ocean and it's like Oh my god, that's real. They're really filming in location wherever it might be. And mm-hmm. uh every shot inside the Bat Cave for the Whedon version was on a green screen and then in the Snyder version it's a set. So mm-hmm. it just again it grounds the movie so much and it yeah. adds that reality and weight to it, similar to what you guys were saying. Um <laughs> Trunkler. Yes, sir. Um when you... <laughs> I'd have to say um this felt like you know, I'm probably gonna be repeating a lot of it there, guys, but um it felt like more of like a cinematic movie right from the get go. Um, honestly, when, uh, and I was going to actually say this, but um, I'm going to the punch when Bruce goes um, to Arthur Curry to recruit him, just the camera angles, the music playing, just the overall vibe felt like it was more of, you know, not just your stereotypical superhero movie, um, more of like a cinematic film. Um, and I gotta say, one of the uh, uh, when they show obviously when uh, Superman uh, at the beginning when he started, when he screams and as that um, sound wave hits the mother box in Themyscira and it kind of cracks. Right then it was like oh shit, and emotion started going and started pumping and throughout the whole movie like you know, my emotions were going you know high low um, just. Haven't had a movie, especially a superhero movie like that, um, ever do that to me with, um, like I said, like emotionally and hype and then sad and everything, you know, everything in between. But uh, pretty much from the get go, you could tell it was a different vibe. But definitely, I gotta say, when um, like I said, when Bruce goes to whatever uh, poor town that was uh, to recruit Arthur, you could just you know, the feel, the vibe, the visuals, the camera angles, everything uh, made him seem like more of like a cinematic movie rather than just a superhero movie. Now, did anyone pick up, you know, when he's, you know, hiking on the mountain and leading the horse and riding the horse and then he comes to the, the cliff and he's wearing the goggles and he takes the goggles off? Did anyone pick up that those look like the same goggles that he wears when he's in the nightmare Batman suit? Oh, shit. Yeah. Huh. It almost like mm-hmm. made me think, wow, the, he's taking it full circle because he's in like Iceland and he's like, you know, kind of in this cold environment. And then what the future holds where it's just going to be barren wasteland. Interesting. You know, one of the one of the issues that I'm realizing because it's been well, this is partly because I only ever watched the Justice League once, but partially because of that and partially because of how long it's been in between. I found that some of the things I didn't remember if they were there before or not. Like we had, um, did, did we get, uh, 
the Adam in the Justice League, the Justice no. League version. No, not at all. That's you know he's working with Silas. Nope. Uh, was um who else did I see? Oh, uh, was Crispus Allen in the Justice no. League? You know that's no. that's the Spectre that Gordon's yeah. talking to in the GCPD. So there are all these cool things, and uh, I'm. I'm sure this scene, like, what well, I don't think we saw Lois visiting the uh, the monument no. uh, in the Justice no. League, but when she gets no. there, it's just cool that after she picks up the coffee, she gets to uh, to that monument, and she hands it to the officer who's the, there guarding the monument, and it's cool that they named the officer guarding the monument Jerry, like Jerry Siegel, one of the creators mm-hmm. of Superman. Did Did you see um? Someone well, that, that actor was the original of yeah. Jimmy Olsen. Well, yeah. not the original, but yeah. Yeah. Jimmy oh, the from, cop? From, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy yeah, from, yeah. That's sick. And in, in the Justice League, he's the prison guard that's uh, signing in Barry when he visits his dad. Yeah. Did, um, the, um, it was posted earlier today, but um, I guess the Flash is knocked up or sitting up against a, a memorial with names etched into it. And one of the names on there was Ben Parker. Did you guys yeah. see that? Yeah. That's fucking crazy. The, the picture but is that legit like i didn't see it in the movie i, I, didn't, uh, I didn't either i think they put the cast like everybody that's worked on the snyder movies was the uh, names in the stone that's kind of what i was reading into uh, I heard, but, I should say. it's kind of cool because we all just like what i felt like we went to the movies but you could literally just put it on right now I mean, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. fucking pause it and shit. it's crazy <laughs> like, it's kind of L- lpc uh what were some uh whedon isms that you noticed were gone or when was the first time you noticed this was a different movie um, so I'll, I'll switch it up, but I'll say when, you know, the little kids are interviewing him and he's got the CGI over his mustache, <laughs> getting that out was great. <laughs> Lying about you being the boss, boss, that's cool. I'm glad that's gone. Um, you know, obviously what we're talking about was, was Zack Snyder. Like he's an artist, cinematography. I think all of his movies have like balance and strength in them. Um, but I think we're talking about balance given like Cyborg and... The Flash, they're due. Like we're saying, like there's more backstory. It's like a richer mm-hmm. story to them, and that's why I was like, "Damn, this man really put like a lot of thought and effort into everything he does, right?" It's like every single detail. Like we're saying, you know, you see Flash for a second up against the monument, but that's all those names in there. So, um, like you're saying, just not a you know crackerjack thing. It's thought out, well thought out, a lot of time, effort. Um, overall, I kind of think everything he threw in this movie was like, "This is my last." fucking shot if i could walk away from this like and never do another one i've done everything i possibly could yeah i felt like um like you know you watch an animated movie and it's just like fun to follow along like it's it's kind of gripping and there's like joy to it even though it's dark um i i think i got that vibe overall throughout the whole thing yeah oh i wanted to just go back to add one more thing uh the first fight scene when they when they all first fight step steppenwolf when he's doing the interrogations that felt so new to me and so much better than when i remembered i don't know i i don't i can't re- see I, after i think gramps was the same way after me and him saw justice League, we both said to each other that shit was kind of whack and like when i when movies are like that i just forget about them so i it's hard for me to remember what i first saw in the justice league but the new the the scene where they fight step move for the first time again felt so new and so much better something yeah. about it that felt so much better yeah. that i was just well, well, i think one of the things that's a plus is that this version is missing some of the things that knocked characters down a peg. Like, I, I do remember in that scene, we had the part with, with Barry telling Batman, like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to fight people. I just push people and run away. And, yeah. and oh, Batman my goodness. has to give him a pep talk. To, in this one, he just, he just you know, that was so bad. like a hero and, yeah. and does his part. Or when he falls on Diana or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, they took out that yeah, joke that, that he recycled was... from Avengers. What the hell was this guy thinking? Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that, the, the also misogyny. You know, yeah, the parts where it's so cringy. Yeah, the part where they go back to Wayne Manor in the Batcave and Batman needs help taking off his armor, and it kind of has that oh God, innuendo part between that. him and yeah. Diana. It's like. You didn't need that, you know? You didn't need that. You didn't yeah. need that sexualization of the characters. I mean, I, yeah, Bruce is a handsome guy. I, I'm so sick of women just throwing themselves at him, you know? He's 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 more than just you know, a piece <laughs> of meat. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm so no, sick man. of 
Bruce being sexualized like that that upsets me and triggers me. Glad you said that, Gramps. <laughs> yeah, I That's think uh, so, something uh, uh, that will. Oh, sorry, Trunks. Go ahead. I'll big trunks. Say, um, just to jump on what, what you guys are saying, even in uh, Josh, uh, Josh, <clears throat> or whatever, uh, reading version, um, when right before they're about to go to the final battle, uh, they're in they're in the back cave. They're in that. Uh, yeah, on a plane, and uh, Aquaman sits on the Batmobile, and he starts saying, you know, he starts complimenting Wonder Woman, uh, yeah. and all that, and then he looks, and he's st- sitting on the Lasso of Truth. Oh my and god! It was like, that yes, was, uh, that, yeah. that's, Marvel <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's Marvel shit. Yeah, that's Marvel shit. It works for Marvel, but I'm just like, oh. I think uh, I think that kind of leads into a little bit of the next uh, topic, which is um, what, how far into it or what, when did you realize that you loved this movie or hated it? And I think for me, one of the things that I realized, like, oh, my God, the thing that it did so much better was um, if the, like Aquaman, Arthur's character is so different because he shows so much more compassion in this version for Cyborg and like. You know, there's the scene when Silas dies and, and Aquaman looks at the whole team and he goes, his father is dead because of us. Um, yeah. When he's explaining when they're in the Batcave and he's looking over at Cyborg and he goes, it's not fair. He has to carry all of this weight just because of what we're going to do. And right. then Flash says, I thought you didn't care. And Aquaman says, I never said that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so that Aquaman has compassion in this movie. And then um, Flash he's not is just like, a bro. That's right. the thing. That yeah, I yeah, yeah. The first movie, like, he was just a bro. I was yeah. like, not, and that, not a... that made me not want to see the Aquaman movie because I was just like, this is the first time we get to see Momoa as Aquaman, and he's just a bro. Yeah, and he has so much more depth and like compassion. You know, he's he's like more human than he was in the other version. And Flash is like nowhere near as clumsy or goofy. I mean, he has some goofiness, yeah. but he's not like clumsy and like. Yeah. Cl- like I think that we didn't. I think I think Snyder gave him a little clumsiness, but we didn't played it up so much. And um, this version of him is like, you could tell he doesn't have the experience, but he's trying. Whereas yeah. the one before, it felt like he didn't want to try. He was like almost cowardly. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, holy shit! Like they just butchered Cyborg. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> Cyborg is <clears throat> like Cyborg. And Cyborg's dad, Silas, and and in in conjunction with Silas, the Atom is in this entire movie, and yeah. like they fucking, and you know I know that um, Cyborg, you know, made that uh, Ray Fisher was making the argument, or he basically was making the allegations that you know there was some racism and there was some um, there was a lot of racism that went into the Justice League and cuts, and you know let's for the sake of argument, let's say there was or there wasn't. But if you're gonna use some like some facts and show some receipts, it's a really bad sign that like every person of color was basically cut out of the Justice League. Yeah. Like Iris yeah. West, uh, the Adam, Iris. I'm sorry, uh, Silas, <laughs> Cyborg's Martian Cyborg's Manhunter. Mom. Yeah, it's like yep. dude, Whedon. Like you are not Yo. making yourself. <laughs> you're not like <laughs> you're not helping yourself out, bro. Like Jesus what I, Christ. What like, I understand is like Cyborg like got weeded out. The, yeah, he, he was waiting to use that one. But <laughs> 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 what, nice. what I, I don't understand is Cyborg's dad pretty much killed himself in in the face of you know um, a uh, a superior technological being or in, in that uh, context. And when the fuck's he gonna learn? He did the same exact thing in Terminator Two. Yeah, with I love like that. Oh shit! Cyborg dad is Miles Mason. <laughs> didn't, didn't you get the picture like, when Sarah Connor showed up at your house and tried to kill you? <laughs> they, they need to put those scenes playing together in a fucking uh, in a stitch, man. That shit would be hilarious. The guy never yeah, learns. I, his I think it was Amazon. important, like what what LPC was saying, and, and you know, in regards to Flash and Cyborg and what Tom said about Aquaman, how those three characters all had much more story. Yeah. And um, that was one of the things I enjoyed, you know, seeing Aquaman uh, speak to Volko and uh, and to Mera. And, man, like, that that's... At, at this point... All right, Batman didn't get a solo movie with Snyder, but, like, he's Batman. He, you know, he doesn't fucking need one, right? 
But yeah. you know, they re they reboot Superman, Wonder Woman gets her movie, and then you know, if you go if you watch this and then you go into Aquaman, you know, like you're you're full steam ahead into this character, not you know, whatever the fuck we got <clears throat> with Whedon. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was talking with uh my friend Levi today and he made another great point. You know, we're we're talking so much about the differences between the characters, but also with Steppenwolf himself, his motivation in this movie is so yeah. much different than the first one. Yep. I didn't understand what his motivation was in the first one, but, but this one you see that he's trying to redeem himself in front of Darkseid to get mm-hmm. back, you know, at his side on, um, you know. And, and it makes so, so much more sense having yeah. that stuff replaced and that they even went a step further that... We also find out that the Antilife equation is located on Earth. Mm, right? yeah. So, you know, that's taking it a, another step, uh, you know, towards more, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. right yeah. Gee. It's uh, funny you mentioned that, Gramps. Uh, the big memes right now are Desaad memes about how, uh, <laughs> how Desaad is just like being a total fucking cock block to uh <laughs> steppenwolf every time uh you know that you know that meme of that dude like it's like a five-year-old meme where it shows this dude like he's answering his phone it's a flip phone and he looks at his phone and he just shuts it out of disgust and it shows anytime Desaad picks up the phone and it's steppenwolf and it's the dude like <laughs> looking at the phone and disgust, <laughs> hanging up and then i saw another one today it said uh Desaad's the type of motherfucker that'll tell the teacher she forgot to give out homework <laughs> uh, the, the, the biggest shock I got from Desaad was right near the end when he decided to "I told you so" Dark Side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, damn dude, you got some huge balls. Dick, <laughs> spitting balls on the dude's memory. <laughs> you just got, you just got beheaded in front of you, and you're like, "I told you that motherfucker wasn't shit." <laughs> Man, I, I got, I got masters, I got masters of the future vibes from that shit. The portal opening, dark side, and everything, and then they turned around and go back. And I don't know if you guys remember that movie, but it was, mm-hmm. it was for like Evil Lynn and all that. It was, yeah, it was kind of. Um, let's see here. So let's get back on it. Uh, when did when did everybody believe? Like, all right, man, I'm in on this movie. Like, I'm all aboard. I'd say once the Amazon battle started. Um, so that was probably within the first 30 minutes. And just the changes from that versus the initial one, I was like, this shit's already a million times better. Man, I'm telling you, like, like <laughs> the first, the first, in the beginning. It was Literally, like the for me, it was in the beginning. Like, yeah. switch gears. Yeah, for real, That's- like, the opening credits for me, man. When it said a Zack Snyder film, that's that's pretty much. I'm not even kidding, man. Like I, <laughs> I, I trust that guy. Um, except for Sunker Punch, <laughs> I trust. Yes. That guy. <laughs> except, for, I don't know what happened there, but uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I, I like I like Zack Snyder. I, I I'll never understand all the hate. I I'll never understand all the hate, man. Well, and yeah. with, like with this movie. I mean, when the when Whedon's version came out in 2017, everybody going up to that and during, and after that movie were bitching. Oh, there's no character development. You know, uh, for the for the non comic book people, they don't know who these people are. Mm. And in this version, you actually see like we already talked about. You know, you there's more in depth with Cyborg, Flash, Aquaman's not some bro with a man bun that's you know. Screaming like a cowboy when he's flying through the air. And oh, I missed that scream though. Yeah, bro, <laughs> he landed on the Batmobile and he didn't say yeah. That yeah. was good. Yeah. That, yeah. The fact that they took that out was like, oh, yep. okay, that. But he still doesn't. He still say my man, or does yeah, he not? Well, say that's, that? yeah, he says that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's <laughs> okay. It's like not too bad. I missed well, the cowboy well, scream. I'm not gonna lie to you. So, I mean, I think that's the only time he ever said my man was when he was in the sky and Cyborg flew in and grabbed him. He looks over and it's Cyborg. Mm. Oh, Wouldn't you, know, you say he, that, though? I would. But, no, <laughs> and, and I would, Cowboy. But still, it was cool when he surfed on the fucking pirate. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta surf I on like that. I, that was slides when down, Snyder... Slides down the building, right? A parademon looks like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> 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 Snyder was still... Uh, 
on Snyder cut that first trailer where he's uh, surfing on the Batmobile. And I remember being like, he's fucking surfing on the Batmobile. <laughs> so, no, matter of but um, not a problem. Anybody else have any different uh, scenes when you were like, this is fucking it. I'm totally in, in, all in on this. You know, what, I, one point where I was borderline offended that a scene was taken out was that uh, Barry and Iris scene that was in all the first trailers. You know, we saw mm. the, those early oh, the, shots where he puts his finger through the glass, you know, and, yeah, you, see the, the, oh. you see the glass start to stretch. Bro. But that whole scene, like, you know, it had, you know, some elements of goofiness to it, you know, just Barry being, being Dude, Barry. I never wanted a but hot dog was, more in my life than that moment. Yeah, right? <laughs> like him dog. putting a hot dog in his pocket, you know, being goofy, but then you see why. <laughs> but it, it's, it was just really cool to not only have that moment, you know, see, have that setting up because Iris is going to be in the Flash movie. So it's important to, to have that set up that they decided to take away from the previous version but uh, also giving us that look at how flashes uh you know how the how the world looks to him when he's using the speed force you know oh. how fast he can move around things and how he's able to to actively think about things and you know be be multiple steps ahead of, of what's going on because He's just moving faster on every level. And we didn't just get uh, a flash of lightning. And whoop, oh, there you go. There was a flash of light and she saved. You know, they, yeah. it was an yeah. actual moment. You know what this movie did to me was make me want to actually watch the Flash movie. Ooh, yeah. gross. Oh, gross. Because shit. I Damn. hated that character yeah. in the first Justice League. <laughs> I was like, too. Yeah. this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, it was kind of like parody, but they kind of gave him like. I like his suit, by the way. I I have always liked his suit. I know. I don't know yeah, if that's it's like very handmade, but I just like doesn't. detail. Grumps doesn't. What? They, Grumps doesn't. Oh, but I mean, I don't like the suit, but the character in this movie comes full circle. Yeah, like he's true. He literally goes from a dog walker in the beginning or whenever to the end where he's you know getting a job and in a, in a you know whatever uh, for, crime uh, uh, yeah mm -hmm. jump on or something yeah well, when he's visiting his dad in this movie and his dad's like son you're wasting your life you're not you know you're basically yeah. you know you have like you've had like 10 jobs in the past month and he's doing those jabs things. Yeah, he's doing those dog walking or whatnot. And then when he's able to go to his dad and show him the uh yeah, the he got a real job. Dude, yeah, and then fucking dad job, like, Harry. Every every scene felt like each scene was explained more. Like they just added that five or ten minutes that explained more that made the story flow more, whereas you're kind of not guessing what the story's about or why they're doing this next thing or why he's saying this. Yeah. So it was four hours, but it didn't even feel like four hours because each scene in the movie was being set up more or was being explained more as that extra five minutes here, extra five minutes there. Everybody, I feel like I feel like they all got their poster moment back because right. like there's moments where Flash is doing something epic, like going back in time, you know, at the end with the Stefan Wolf scene. There's multiple moments. My favorite cyborg moment is when the dad's like, you have the world's nuclear arsenal. It's just a thought. And he like wipes across the sky and you see all the warheads. That's so fucking sick. Like mm -hmm. he's just wiping the, the screen of a phone. Yeah. And uh, that scene right there, I was like, oh, that to me really put him in a, a new respect. I was like, you know what? He's right. He, he could by himself control the whole planet. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And what I, about when he gave that? He could uh, actually have given funny. Texas some energy. <laughs> and just, just having a few things like that highlighted is enough to make you say, "Okay, uh, let's get a cyborg movie." Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it. Uh, I like that. I like that his dad says, "You know, you have all this ability at your fingertips, but the but the difficulty won't be doing it. It will be not doing it." Yeah, he also you told know. Skynet that, so, you know. Nah. <laughs> Skynet has become self-aware. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he followed that lady's life and, and gave her, you know, a bunch of money. And so forth. Dude. And she wasn't getting any tips, man. That's fucked yeah. up. Did you guys see that lady on Twitter, the actress? No. 
So, like, the actress is almost like this. It's like a mirror image of the scene. The actress went on Twitter and she says, hashtag Snyder Cut. Can someone tell me if I'm actually in this movie? I was cut from the Justice League. I was cut from the Whedon version. I was the waitress in Cyborg's backstory. And it went fucking viral. Mm. And people were like, yes, you were an amazing part of the backstory. Like, you were incredible. Thank you for your performance. And, like, her fucking tweet went viral. Just like in the fucking movie where, like... The whole concept of it is like this is this was like a an actress who probably went in there to do like 12 hours of filming. She's probably like a no name actress. She spent her whole day just doing this one scene just to get cut out and never to have this moment like have, you know, that could have been the highlight of your career sometimes. And then it, she she fucking tweets it because she's British. She didn't have HBO Max. So she's like, I'm trying to figure out how to watch the movie. Can someone tell me if I'm in it? Like, what the fuck? That's so crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. But. Uh, I think too that uh-huh. I love that we didn't really water down the Amazons, man. Like yeah. um, the scene where I was all in was when uh, Steppenwolf is in that little uh, in that temple, and he says, "I will bathe in your fear," and Hippolyta says, "Amazons, show him your fear," <laughs> and they're all fucking. We have no fear, dude. Oh, oh my god, that's, 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 that's what Hill tells Tom every, every morning. Yeah. yeah, that was some 300 shit for sure. Yeah. Yo, that shit was hardcore. That was one of my favorite scenes. The Amazon, yeah. Man. Okay, we Spartan no versus Amazon. Who you got? Amazons, Amazons, because I just yeah. want to watch Amazon. And, and the Spartans are just, are just human, yeah, they're right? just men, yeah. Oh man, okay. Now they got that out of the way. Let's see what else we got here. Favorite scenes. Favorite scenes. There's so many scenes. So many scenes. Uh, Grumps. <laughs> oh man, I'm on the spot. I don't know. I don't have. I, mean, <laughs> I don't. The whole thing. Good answer. Yeah, mm-hmm. the whole thing. Like you know. Honest answer. Right? I, I started watching on my phone, mm-hmm. and then I was like, All right, I got to watch this on the TV, like a yeah, normal pretty- human. Mm-hmm. And, uh, start- <laughs> I, 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 yeah, dude. Because you I was really like, didn't want to get off the bed, huh? <laughs> no, I did not. I, I, as soon as I open my eyes, turn around, open my phone. All right, let's start. So I gotta watch this on TV. And like, like, know. like when, like when you uh, start eating a sandwich over the sink, and like, oh, this is too good. I gotta get a plate. <laughs> <laughs> when you had a beeper, yeah. bro, it's been a, a couple of long way since beeper. Bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't. The whole thing, yeah, the whole thing was yeah. just. Seen. Let's see. Um, I really liked the uh, the Barry Allen scene. Probably my favorite scene was the when he's just reversing time. And the final battle. Yeah, the final battle. Final battle scene definitely stands out as the best. When he starts running back and like the ground and all the destroyed buildings are just like being put back together. That was so fucking glorious. Like as much as I hate the Flash is running and they didn't fix it in this film, it was still it was still there. I give it a pass. But that scene, I was literally counting down the minutes until the nightmare scene happened, and it was the last fucking scene. Yep. <laughs> I was like, "Where's the fucking nightmare scene? This is false advertisement." Ramps. Okay, there was one scene in particular that made me think or make me out loud say, "No way!" Is when. The love of my life, Diane Keaton is visiting Lois Lane, and then walks out of the, walks into the hallway, and her eyes go red, and it's Martian yeah. Manhunter. Oh yeah, yeah. I was that like, was cool. oh. that was that was sick. Yep. That was cool. I literally had to pause it, rewind it, play it again. <laughs> I'm like, Did you just fucking see this? Like, turn it up. I actually, you know, when the eyes first went red, I thought it was the Terminator again because the sky. <laughs> well, at first, I thought it was like, oh shit, that's like Dark Side or somebody, you know, yeah. from that group. And then it was like, oh, that's so cool. That's so Martian cool. Manhunter was a nice touch. Yeah. yeah. Was, a nice touch. yeah. was that the uh, scene where they showed what was in Lois's nightstand? Yeah. The, the, uh, the pregnancy test. test in there. Yeah. And yep. it, that, yeah. it touches back on that at the end. Uh, when we see, uh, when it's revealed that, uh, yeah, not only that, when uh, Bruce is outside the house with Clark, they're moving back into the house. 
Lois is carrying what looks like a bassinet or something, you know, like a, a little mm, baby bassinet yeah. thing. Super and Sons! Then, and then Bruce congratulates him for something. Yeah. Damn, Super Sons uh, teases his wife. <laughs> Jamie Adams. I'll fucking take it. Damn. Uh, Robin's favorite scene. Mm, there are a lot of things, like the, the Manhunter and you know, all, basically everything that we got robbed of in the last version of it. But uh, I I have to give uh, a lot of respect to collectively all of the nightmare stuff. Yeah, the nightmare stuff. Mm, is cool. Yeah, uh, th- that is one of the coolest Batman and Joker exchanges we've had in a movie. <laughs> and, Bullshit. Uh, that's that's a, a big improvement. <laughs> for, which for Leto, having Robin has the floor, have, <laughs> having that exchange <laughs> between them, and even though it's you know it's the apocalypse world version of batman it's so it's it makes it sort of acceptable to hear him say what he said there you know when he's he's talking about when harley quinn was was bleeding to death dying in my arms she made me promise that when i kill you and believe me i will fucking kill you and then I go, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> dude yes i, I want i want to 12 inch Batman action figure that you pull the cord and it says, and I will fucking kill you. I was like, yeah, this ain't no Marvel shit. This is fucking Batman. Shit. He's gonna kill, kill that's, that's the pull quote for the episode. This ain't no Marvel shit, Grandpa Batman. This ain't no Marvel shit. Yeah. I, uh, I have to agree with Robin. My favorite, I, the thing that I have gone back to watch like three or four times over. Uh, specifically is Cyborg's nightmare vision right before they wake up Superman and you see Diana with the coins on her eyes yeah. and, uh, oh, yeah. and, and Cyborg Cyborg. Is, is dead Kilowog yeah. land in yeah. the file yeah, is that Kilowog? He looked it, a little thin I'm glad. To be. he's been working on his fitness it's, if yeah. it's Kilowog he got thin I like that he's keto healthy um, keto yeah, dead Green Lantern <laughs> fucking <laughs> Superman in the Batcave with a charred remains of Lois Lane yeah yeah Brutal. Yeah, um, good. LPC, you were saying? Oh, um, I'll throw in the the flash scene where I guess the building's falling apart on top of all the scientists. Oh, yeah. And yes. you see like flickering lights all over the place and like silhouettes them saving every single piece of uh, debris falling on them, except for the one where Cyborg yeah. comes in. That yeah. was but, pretty uh, cool. I like that, and obviously, you know, the the big, you know, epic uh, war. Um, when everybody comes together to defeat Darkseid, that whole uh, scene. When, That's cool. when Aries... Superman is beating the shit out of him, I was like, oh. Yeah. He's, he's nasty now. <laughs> fucking. Uh, get that, get that stink stink. He's not he that fucking... Boy Scout anymore. Boy. And it, it was cool to see that contrast between the between Superman and Darkseid because at that point, fight when Steppenwolf, you know, swings the axe at Cyborg, but Superman gets in the way and it, you know, lands on his shoulder and he just says, not impressed. It was so close to in the, when we were seeing the first attack, when Darkseid attacked, and uh, you see Ares chop Darkseid's clavicle in half. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that, that part was so nasty. Great brutal. brutal. And he was just yeah. gushing blood all over the place. And he passes the fuck out. <laughs> you <laughs> bitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, Aries just fucking him up. Um, uh, Trunkler, favorite scene? Yeah, um, shit, uh, all the <laughs> pretty much all the fight scenes. Um, you know, I gotta say, Martian Manhunter, of course, Nightmare. But I'm gonna throw in probably the one that is, you know, um, that I really liked was a couple scenes. One was where uh, Cyborg picks up the uh, he's, at, he's at their apartment or whatever. He picks up the tape recorder. He's listening to his dad talk to him, and right when his dad says, "Okay, now let me tell you this," now this message is from father, not the scientist, and just breaks the recorder. Um, and then fast forward to when he goes back and he reassembles it and listens to it. Uh, I thought that was, I thought that was very uh, very nice and you know heartfelt. Um, nice. But I mean. Shit, from start to finish. I mean, you know, it's hard to try and pick something that you guys haven't already said, but I mean, that's the truth. I mean, 
you know, the, the big fight scene with um, Dark Side on Earth in the past, uh, the whole ton of scare us the, um, the the underwater fight scene at uh, in Atlantis. It's, it sounds like you're really giving a lot of scenes a chance, bloke. <laughs> you know, we already talked about it. They flushed out Cyborg's character so much better, and um, you see the contempt that he has. For, you see the the origins of the contempt he has for his father, and yeah. then the the uh, transformation of when his father is proud and finally sees Cyborg's living to his potential when he breaks into Star Labs, and instead of being a snitch, he just kind of lets him go through, walk through, and they kind of give each other that head nod. And, like, you could see, like, his father is finally happy, like, because in a way, dude, it's almost kind of meta where you see fucking Ray Fisher, no no movie credits to his name, walking among the fucking Trinity gods, you know, and then, like, his dad is standing there. It's holy shit. It's my son with fucking Batman, Wonder Woman, fucking uh, Aquaman. Like, oh, my God. Like, yes. You know? And so uh, that was dope to see. But um, I'll tell but, you one thing right now. <laughs> Cyborg was fucking probably top two or three in this entire film. That was that was my my next question for you is uh, favorite character aside from Bats Legends. It might be fucking Cyborg. It might it, it might be Cyborg. After all the hate, dude, they cut out so much of this. They cut out so much of Cyborg is backstory. And his integration into the group and just everything. No wonder why he was upset. Yeah. There's probably an additional 20, 25 minutes of just cyborg footage alone. Yeah. With his, I mean, his dad, part of his dad's story, Silas's story, and then uh, his mom, and then that whole football game scene. Uh, TBT Times, what's your favorite uh, scene on this bad boy? I actually just loaded it up again on the TV right here. Isn't that cool? 2021, baby. Fucking uh, just load a film right on. And, um, uh, you know, it's it's hard to choose, but I, I really like um, the when the Amazons fight, Steppenwolf is yeah. fucking amazing. And I really actually like um, when Diana fights those terrorists in the museum. Um just uh, though they those start right it really sets the tone for the movie that shit is mad hype and man diana just like gives him a little nudge those motherfuckers go through the walls oh man. yeah it's fucking and um yeah, she, she's pretty vicious there like i was yeah. noticing watching the second time that she's murdering those guys yeah. in front yeah. of those kids <laughs> Like yeah. she throws that one guy and smashes his head open on the wall dude do you yeah. think about it like the last guy she just sent them through the the building, and you don't have to do that. She, and she, and you she, know, she, yeah, she could have just backhanded them. Like, yeah. yeah. And yeah, the, uh, instead, she blows the front of the building just, off. To, to the to Grandpa Batman, this ain't no Marvel shit, man. Yeah. In, in the in the Whedon version, um, you just see her gauntlets come together, and it cuts away, uh, and not alluding to what she did. In this version, she disintegrates the motherfucker. Right, this is the Louis version. She sent that motherfucker the through. Version. The uncut Louis version. <laughs> and it's not even, I mean, and besides that, I mean, this version of Wonder Woman is so much more badass than the Louis version. I mean, you see her, like, um, she's slicing fucking pair demons in half, and fucking, it's like, damn. She's the record, badass, like. I still refuse to watch Wonder Woman 1984 because... I just want to view this Wonder Woman yeah. like the Wonder Woman we've seen in Batman vs. Superman, the first Wonder Woman movie, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. This is how I want to remember Wonder Woman. I do not, so I refuse to see yeah. Wonder Woman 1984. And that Respect is your that. right. That is your <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I've, I've all right. Yes, 1984 is the new So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's put a nice bow on it. What is Hold the on, hype I, level? I, I, I gotta put my two cents. In. Oh, I'm sorry, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Robin. How dare you? Go ahead. Last, last time you asked him twice. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that, that's like a double dip. Um, no, real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, real quick, I think one of my favorite parts was when um, Superman is coming back. You know, he's like a little delayed, and he's in his ship, and you see both Jonathan Kent. And his mm. father just speak to him and support him, and and then you start seeing like the variations of the suits that 
are speaking to him, and he yeah. he goes to the original Kryptonian suit. And to me, that's just an amazing homage. That just makes me think of like the original Superman movies. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it's also and it's also an appropriate tie into the death of Superman when he comes back. So it's like that's the original version that we wanted to see. <clears throat> you know, like we didn't went forward and gave the blue suit, which you know doesn't fit the continuity. So we finally saw that black and and silver uh, suit. And I love when the Superman theme comes on, the Man of Steel theme comes on in the ship. Yeah, right? it, it was like. Um, the ship. Like the ship is larger than life, and you see these suits just gear forward and kind of he has the pick of the litter of what he wants, and he picks the original suit. And to me, that was like amazing. Mm. Um, another thing is like I tried not to go on Instagram, but I saw a couple of things of I guess there was people were kind of saying that w- there was like a body that was like decayed in the suit yeah. in, in the ship, and they're it saying was. they think that that was Bizarro. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. That's what they were saying. So I was like, "Man, that's like a really Jason cool Todd." Thing. Jason Todd. Jason Todd. <laughs> yeah, there, there was like a little, a lot of Easter eggs in there. So, yeah, that's one oh, of my favorite, um, just moments because this is the version of Clark that we wanted to see in the original movie, and that just set the tone for the last act. You know? Yeah. Mm, yeah. When uh, when they're Early- wheeling. When they're wheeling his body through, they made another obvious nod to one of the capsules in the Kryptonian ship being open that they also did in Man of Steel, which is the one next to the decaying body, which uh, we or we didn't. Wow. Zaddy said after Man of Steel that um, that was a purposeful nod that Kara uh, Clark's cousin is somewhere on Earth because she got out of the capsule and yeah. is somewhere else. So, again, another nod to the open capsule and there there's a Kryptonian that got out. Somewhere mm-hmm. and uh, in this movie, which was dope to see, but um, damn, I missed yeah. Fiora. Oh, just, yo. just, just seeing these little Easter eggs, like it really gives an opportunity for all these other movies to kind of come about, or you know, like yeah. the fact that they gave so much more purpose to these characters this go around. You've literally opened up an opportunity to five or six new movies where where there was nothing last time, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they uh. Oh, yeah. oh God. Go ahead, chunks. I was gonna say, speaking of which, um, I'm sure you, everyone here, has seen, um, you know, when their people are posting about uh, the Snyder Cut. What is it? What's this new one? The this new hashtag that was extend. Restore the Snyderverse. Yeah. <laughs> now the real so, work begins. <laughs> so here's a quick question: Does, does anybody actually think? Well, I mean, assuming if Zach even wants to, oh, do he does. Another, <laughs> do you think WB is going to see what the numbers were for the Snyder Cut and possibly ask him to do another film? I, I don't see how they cannot. You know, like, uh, the the financial side I feel was guaranteed because you could tell from the support, and that's why it happened because right. it was clear that so many people were going to pay to see this movie. So. You know, X number of subscriptions to HBO Max and then, you know, whatever it else it is in other countries, like it's Crave over here and whatever it is in everyone else's country. And then uh, the people that will buy the Blu-rays when it comes out, the people who will go to the theatrical screenings when those happen. So the, it was known that the money was going to be there because of the support it had for years. And I really think that the only thing it was hinging on was what kind of response it got, you know, both... Uh, critical response and response from fans and with that being so good already i don't see that how they can leave that money on the table and not say okay zach finish your story there's obviously a, a giant audience for this. well yeah. here's the, another into it well i mean i know they're all haters you're gonna get your haters to hate for hate's sake but some of the haters are saying things like oh it's still a mess and I didn't think the movie was... I, I thought the movie felt quite linear. You know, I, I feel like there were a lot of moving parts, but I felt like there was never a confusing part. It all right. intertwines, you know. I just... I don't know. I mean, we knew there were going to be haters, but whatever. I mean, some people think Birds of Prey is better than this movie. I mean, you know, they, they might be off their meds, but, you know... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, you know what? No, Top three DZ. Oh, 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 you're right, okay? Look. Harley Quinn. 
Have you had that? Anyways, you know, um, we, no, you're, we've you're... been we've been we've been trashing the Joss version a lot, and rightly so. But the thing is, if the Joss version didn't happen and Zack's movie was released in the first place, they would have made him cut it down to around the two yeah. hour mark. Yeah. Yeah, and then sure. they'd get a director's cut that was maybe two and a half to maybe three hours yeah. max. We still would have missed sure. an hour of what we saw here. Plus, yeah. none of the extra nightmare stuff that they just shot recently. Someone, someone said made a good point. They said, uh, a top reviewer said, this would not have worked in the movies. This was, it, it, it works better this way. Right. Yeah, like, I, when, I agree. when would we ever have gotten four hours? So this is, it's not just, it's not just his movie. This is what he turned into Warner Brothers before they fucking said anything and before they made him change anything. And and that's what they then allowed him to finish off with VFX. So this is his unfiltered fucking vision that no other director has had the opportunity to present in a wide audience. Like this is before lawyers say, like, no, dude, you can't do that. This is before Warner Brothers is like, you have to take an hour off. You cannot show this. You cannot show that. The only thing that he was not allowed to do was this the scene at the very end with uh, Martian Manhunter coming down to Bruce and talking to Bruce. Originally, that was Kilowog and a different Green Lantern. And WB told him no because uh, Gar- or Guardians. Jesus fucking Christ, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Green Lantern Corps was already, is already in the process of being written. So they're like, you cannot do that. Like, you can't touch that. So he's like, all right, fine, we'll do Martian Manhunter. But this is like, you're, you're right. Like, in a fucked up way, this is the ultimate present from for fans of snyder well here's another thing this is also the result of and this is a shitty thing to think about but also (laughs) the pandemic we never would have got this if there hadn't been a pandemic you know because true you know warner brother at&t they had to make some money and they're like we got this sitting right here right we had we have to invest a small amount more to get this done and we can sell this on so many platforms and make new merch i mean they're just printing money at this point and so yeah it was pretty much a no-brainer but you know it's a sad thing that happened but kind of the result also of the pandemic i, I at think that, at that manhunter scene uh at the part where he he turns to fly away but then he stops and turns back one more time and the, where he just in ends up saying some call me the martian manhunter when he turned back around i i was really hoping he was gonna say oh and we're gonna have to talk about that ring you've been holding on to Ooh. <laughs> wow been now sick. did did you guys notice how different uh affleck looked in that scene yeah, yeah he there. looked real thin, thin and yeah real thin yeah yeah, yeah um uh a thing that we have to also mention is, uh, I thought this is what you were going to say, Gramps. I thought you were going to say uh, one thing that made this happen, which is sad. I thought you were going to say fans bullying the absolute fuck out of studio heads uh, to, yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> twist, their, twist their arm releases. But like this is historic in so many ways, and one of them being that like this was 100% a grassroots movement by people on the internet getting together under a hashtag to make it go viral so much that the original cast gets involved and like just boosts it to the forefront of like the trending topics. They knew what they knew what work they'd put in and they saw this version that was put out and they're just like, Oh God. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, embarrassing for them. So yeah, they're going to get behind that movement and it became so loud that no one could ignore it. I mean, you know, just on everything Batman that when we talked to Liz Wonder, you know, she was one of the forefront supporters for all this. And it just became, you know, so loud, yeah. you know, and the grassroots support grew so strong. It's crazy now that, um, you know, obviously with social media, we have a voice now. Yeah. Yeah. So. Just look. Just look. What's a really good example is the Sonic movie, which I think is historic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like they fixed it, and everyone yeah. loved it. And yeah. it was like, right. damn, that's Thank that's you. crazy. And all you gotta do is tell them what you want, and then 
But they were right. He looked fucking weird. He did. <laughs> Hollywood is two for two on listening to the fans and, and making changes. Yeah, I think, you know, there's always going to be the crazies with death threats. But this is this is smart, though. It's like you have consumers telling you what they want and they'll buy it. And just just listen to them and, and you'll you know, you'll you'll have a good relationship with them. They want the Snyder Cut Nas. And, and, and now now we want. The... <laughs> Go ahead, Trunks. And now we want to save Daredevil and. You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wish. Dare, oh, Bullseye, man. Give Bullseye his due. Yeah. Give Bullseye a chance. Um, mm. No, I mean, um, you know, with social media now, um, instead of the companies, the, the suits, telling the fans, this is what you will like and this is what you will uh, watch, now, like, you know, you know, with social media and everything, um, you know, the people, now the executives are actually see what, you know, the people say this, okay, let's, let's just give it to them and shut them the hell up. Oh, fuck, we just made $100 million or whatever. Um, I just listened to the fans. So, hopefully, this might let's you know, not, just end, and then, then not just end here with Justice League. Like, maybe they'll listen to fans like, this oh, like Sonic. When they, first, when they first showed his first look, everyone shit on it all day, every day. They went back, they changed his look, and everybody loved it, so... Yeah, we just say we don't want that Marvel shit, man. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> I think at the very least, they're going to give him, at, at the very, very least, if they don't let him finish, like, at least the nightmare scenario on HBO Max as a series or whatever, if they don't do that, at the very least, you got to think they're going to go to Snyder and be like, all right, you can do one solo movie. At the very least. I don't know. He, like, here's my theory. The injustice, the nightmare stuff's injustice stuff. So that's right. from that's all injustice. They were going to do that to make more outlets for a bigger DC universe. That was the plan. But now he turned it into an actual nightmare because I feel like they're at a standstill with where they go with this. If this universe is going to go on or not, you know, because yeah. that nightmare scene was building. You know that that gives you so many different outlets now, like based on the Injustice series, which was really ballsy, man. That's like well, like it really it, it's really. Final Crisis and Injustice. Uh, I'll go. I, 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 um, if I had to choose, um, Wonder Woman. I love. I love Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, think, <laughs> like, I think I have to go Cyborg as well. He was just such. Uh, he was the. He was just the crux of the the entire. He was so much of the team of keeping them unified and. Yeah, it, and such an improved part. He gave a hundred thousand dollars stimulus check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Zack Snyder and and I read this tweet or you know a response to a tweet from Zack Snyder that Zack Snyder said that Cyborg was the heart of the movie, and I was yeah. like, oh, well, how's that going to happen? Because he was hardly in the first yeah. version, mm. and then you see this movie, and you're like, yeah. Wow, and it's kind of cool because he's got a red glowing heart. That's and cool because if the going in, going into this movie not seeing it yet or even the other one yet, I would initially feel that Cyborg would be the character I'd be the least interested in. So it's kind of cool that you know they they did kind of centered around him in this in the Snyder Cut. Yeah, plus he scored four touchdowns in one game. Yep. <laughs> 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 I, I'm gonna have to jump on and uh, join the bandwagon and say, if uh, there's one character that stood out the most, Cyborg. Wow. Give me, a, give me, give me a Cyborg solo movie. I want wow. a Cyborg figure. Wow. I mean, the that part at the end when uh, he's pulling apart the mother boxes and he says, uh, "I'm not broken and I am not alone." And uh, I mean, just like that was his, like you know, that's that's his mic drop moment. I feel like and. Man, I just—it's like he was fucking. That was a cool scene. Gutted. He was gutted in this in, in the what the Whedon version. Yeah. Wow. That, Cyborg definitely stole the show. That's the bottom line, you know. He um, was the show. Wow. Yeah. Like I, oh, he got his due. Yeah, you get his due. You finally respect him as a character um, in that universe. But to me, all around, like it was kind of about. This whole thing was about purpose and redemption, and obviously Cyborg was the most validated, but you you see more in-depth about Flash, 
all the way down to Steppenwolf, from what yeah. Graham said before, like, he he was all over the place the last movie. Not only did his suit, like, his suit was more refined, and you didn't know what the hell he was doing. He was just in the background just collecting these mother boxes, but... He was just a bad guy just to be a bad guy. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. he's trying to redeem his debt with Darkseid, and now you know his his backstory, and it makes sense. Everything just came together in this movie, and it was more refined, where in that previous movie, everything was just so vague, and we just didn't know what was going on. So that I, I feel like three or four characters were fully revealed um, with with uh, Snyder. Down, down to the flash. Like, now, like what Graham said, like, now there's so much interest in seeing another adaptation of a Flash movie, but it's 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 an open field for him, you know. Yeah. Actually, it's happening because Andy Machete, the guy who directed it, is directing the Flash movie. That's yeah, fucking. I, I that's actually that. happening. That's insane. That and is they insane. Got, <laughs> they got the actress who's uh, his love interest in this is in that one too. Yeah. The hmm. um. It's happening. So this this universe is being extended. Technically, it's being extended right it's, now. So. It's it's crazy that it's like four years later. That's like yeah. <laughs> so much lost time. That's that's unreal. Like we could have had two movies of each character already. Well, I really hope that they get the lanterns in there to make this complete. That's what it's missing. You got to get the lanterns. You got to get How in there. Let's hope. They're not too late. Get Hal in there, and uh, yeah, Shazam is the man. I'm gonna flip the script with my choice. I, oh, uh oh. I really wanted to see more of Dark Side. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And when yeah. they finally showed him, I was like, "Yes, give me more. I want more of uh-huh. this dude." Oh yeah. yeah, Give me some more, Dad. So that big. <laughs> big. Dude, Dark Dark Side is like the Dark Louis Side. of that movie, bro. <laughs> I'm going to tell you where you can put those Omega Beams, baby. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. I want to see Omega Beams. I want to see, you know, I want to see some granny goodness. And I want to yeah. see... Oh, yeah. You know, Give me some of that granny goodness. Yeah, that, I want awesome to see all to that. see the Omega Beams. Yeah. See, this, this is why I hope it extends, because I, I want to see Dr. Fate and Mr. Miracle and, and all these crazy-ass characters, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm hoping that yeah. it goes when, on. When I do mean, we get our character that gets fat for the, the, the final movie? Right, and, and, uh, and if we if we get if we get another if we get another movie and any of it takes place on Apocalypse, you know, with Granny Goodness and everyone there, that's a, a great opportunity to show Barda and Scott. So wait, yeah. wait like you guys keep up with the Twitter and all that shit. Well, what's what's happening? What are the what are the studios? What are the rumblings coming out of the studios and the rumor mill and all that shit? Though there there still is a new gods movie being written by Ava DuVernay and uh, okay. Tom King, and I'm going to be honest with you: how the fuck are they going to work their way around the Snyder cut? They're just going to have to ignore it because <laughs> it's you know you know Tom King. He's going to the way he writes and the way characters are going to be. You know, their their new gods are going to be more probably like the Vision TV show, which, you know, people love that. But it's going to be definitely different than Snyder Cut. So yeah. um, as it is right now, Snyder has said in an interview, he's definitely open to continuing something. And it's just a matter of HBO Max. Come, I, I don't think it'll even be a, a conversation with Warner Brothers. It's going to be HBO Max. It's good is, because HBO Max got a lot of uh, traffic and a lot of footing and a lot of money behind it. Yeah. So and and it's they, not like they DC, yeah. yeah they have the overall I think shot collar of AT and T uh, that they're more closely considing with than <laughs> Warner Brothers. So they they'll bitch slap whatever Warner Brothers says and they'll just be like no 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 you come over here you talk to us and you yeah, we'll we'll deal with each other. The numbers talk man the numbers fucking talk. Yeah, um, uh, Grumps did you tell did you tell us your favorite? No, I mean the whole thing. What favorite character? character? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean Cyborg. Yeah, he was damn. Mm. The tune no is changing. Thing. The tune is changing for. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, just, just to add real quick, um, from what we were saying before about the longevity, um, at at the last, after the credits or right before the credits, you had Martian Manhunter telling Bruce, "This is not the last time you've seen of Darkseid." So. They've mm-hmm. definitely kept that open, and 
that's you know that's that's your pull for a second sequel right there. Right, you know? Here's here's my hopes. These are my hopes, and I and I think this could happen because it has happened, and that is that they have a, a some a, the Batman Batman movie universe being its own thing while this DC cinematic universe keeps expanding as well because it did happen. The, the Joker movie proved that you can do this. Right. All right. They released the Joker movie while the DC this DCEU thing was still going on, expanding, and Jared Leto was still that Joker. So, if, like, if they expand the Batman universe and, and and do a Batman cinematic movie universe while we have the DC cinematic universe movie universe, that would be that. That's what I would hope for. That you know, because because uh, you there's why would you want to stop now? They they're finally building something after this Snyder cut. Now we're getting some real world building, man. Mm-hmm. And it's oh, yeah. like, nagging to the real needy green. Like, now, now, now people actually want a fucking cyborg movie. And now Hot Toys is like, we better get that thing back in production. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. I've been waiting for that. So, yeah, Whatever. man. Wait, trunks. Wait. Trunks. Right. Trunks and LPC. So, um, your favorites. Well, I mean, of course, you know, Cyborg, Flash. But, um, but I'm going to have to go with, uh, I'm going I'm to have to agree with uh, Teezus and uh Graham, so I got to go with the bad guys. Uh, I really like how they how they uh, portrayed Steppenwolf. I'm not just some, you know, mindless bad guy just to have a bad guy. Um, trying to prove to, you know, his master, um, you know, the, the payback for his betrayal. Um, I loved when he communicated the way he communicated through that stone, and like the first time he saw the sod, it was like, oh man, this is badass, and then. Um, Dark Side. I, I think Dark Side um, is a uh, dinner dog for uh, stealing the show. Um, just because <laughs> you actually see, you know, the you know the, the bad guy. You actually see this god, and uh, seeing that, I was like, oh fuck yeah! And then you know the way they it just I, all the all the characters got an upgrade. Um, and I'm I'm happy with every single character and how they how they were able to give them some kind of story. Um, yeah, it's four hours long, but you know, the, the, like like I said, back in 2017, people bitched that there was no uh, character development. Now we have character development with every single character. You know. Agreed. True. I just want um, to expand on this universe please <laughs> i know like, so many characters you could still bring I mean, into it too like, like like you guys I, I i would i'd go see a cyborg movie i i i want to see what's going on with this flash movie like come on wb don't don't shit the you know don't shit the bed yeah yeah so um probably the last time unfortunately i was on the podcast we were talking about just justice league and I, I actually like Cyborg in that movie, even though they totally fucked him over um, in the long run. But I, I agree, Joss. Um, geez, Dark Side, huge highlight. Um, something I'd like to see more of, obviously, is the Bat Tank. I was a little bummed yeah. it was just that one still. Mm. Yeah. I was like, damn, what's that going to play in the whole role? But um, again, like everybody's saying, you know, give us more. I'm. T- I mean, there's so many characters in the DC universe. I, I I hate to say it, but I think I think Marvel Marvel does a good job in terms of getting all their characters out there. Yeah. And it's like DC needs to do that. We got footing the the popularity, the traffic, the money, the numbers are there. I hope they don't. I, I hope they keep going. I really hope they keep going. Like, all right, let me ask you guys a question. If if you what DC character that has not been on screen yet would you want to see on screen? Hawkman. Okay. Hawkman. Hawkman. That, I mean, that guy's been around forever. <laughs> as real. As, as real. Yeah. I want to see Zatanna, good Zatanna. Wow, that would be cool. Yeah. Man bad. Man bad. Oh, man. That would be so awesome. I mean, Again. give us a fucking green lantern. What, 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 what about that. Lobo? Like, people like Lobo, right? Oh, yeah. He was in that TV show, wasn't he? Krypton. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't get to see it though. It was pretty good, but, but there's just so many. Yeah. Big Barda, you know, fucking. Yeah. The Fury. Uh, 
Like if they if, if they made a sequel to this with Dark Side, uh, you know, like what Robin was saying, um, you know, we, we saw a glimpse of Granny Goodness in the background. Well, we assume it is. Uh, we actually physically see the side not through the you know the communication and through the stone. Fear. I mean, that just opened the door for having you know the fury there. Um, I tell you though that that good. I want to see someone do the Green Lantern. Lanterns, right, man, and do the the was yeah. it the spectrum the spectrum of emotion or whatever? Like, I want to mm. see, I want to see that done right. That Ryan Reynolds shit was <laughs> trash. Well, like, that, also, that shit was fucking. He was gonna make a cameo apparently, but not as Green Lantern, as a different Lantern. Yeah, oh, man. yeah Zach cool. wanted to have him. Ryan Reynolds is cool, but he's not Hal Jordan, man. He's just not Hal. No, Jordan. but Sinestro is so perfect in that movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he was. What a waste! They wasted him. <laughs> Robin, you know, pointed out how Crispin Allen was in there. It'd be cool to see yeah. Spectre. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. 100%. I mean, they could, make, they cool. could make an awesome Justice League Dark. They were supposed yeah. to do that with the director, yeah, it, but it got scrapped. It was Isn't happening. It Del Toro? And, and before that, it was going to be Del Toro. Yeah, oh, like yeah. Yeah. Del Toro. Yeah, that would have been Del it, How that, cool would it have been if there was... At some point, you know, while they were in Gotham, something had you know, some part of the attack was happening there. You know, when the parademon, the, the parademons were there or whatever, and you saw Crispus Allen get killed because I think that's when he becomes the host for the mm-hmm. Spectre is just after he dies. Spectre so would have been just a, a planting a cool seed yeah. for it if we saw him die. And then Keanu, Keanu shows up as Constantine. That was wasn't that like the opening scene from the Justice League with Batman? Like, that was the only thing I would carry over. That was a good know. scene. That was a good scene. He, he jumps into cool. the Iron Demon and they're flying in the air. It's like a man. Yeah. Like it's it's a cool Batman moment, you know. Like we finally yeah, got a yeah. Batman on a rooftop, you know. Like you know, perched there, yeah. blending in like a gargoyle, and then with, with and his... doing that. Yeah, so, yeah. That, so that was it, cool. it was it was a cool little scene for for Batman, but it just didn't really fit. No, no, it, no, was, it, was, it, it wasn't. Was but... It was like What's an eighty nine like... homage for a quick second. Yeah, I yeah, like that. yeah like standalone scene. Yeah. 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 Another oh. thing, just speaking about that whole scene with the parademons, I felt like uh, Snyder, re- he really upgraded these parademons where they were kind of just schmucks last time, and now they're yeah. like highly skilled. There was even a scene where one of the parademons kind of sideswiped the Batmobile. Oh, yeah. Yes. If then I was like, man, these fuckers are actually strong as shit like yeah. that man be kicking them in the chest though bees. boy he's Batman. <laughs> they're, they're like worker bees like they're they're swarming and they're it, oh parademons they're swarming, are, yeah. I, I would get a parademon hot toy yes no, no. <laughs> but like this, I, this time in, around they were upgraded and they were a lot stronger and a lot yo, more intelligent too how how fucking sick was it when they're pulling the fucking atlanteans out of the water that was amazing yeah. that was yeah. amazing Fucking sick. That, that, that's one of my favorite parts. I was like, this is how you do DC, motherfucker. Like, yeah. dragging that, him out of the water. Like, that that head on the rock. So you, I mean, yeah, that was brutal. I'm surprised no one's touched on this yet. Batman was using guns, killing them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Killed a shitload of them <laughs> with the <laughs> guns. <laughs> they were freaking <laughs> lasers. Guns, boy. <laughs> um, speaking of which, um, like, those were rubber even, lasers. Even <laughs> <laughs> he went stepping wolf goes to get the mother box from uh from Atlantis. I mean, um, you know, they see the boom tube, so Merritt has the guy go and you know, I was looking to see the step wolf and the next thing you know you see an Atlantean get his arm cut off and blood floating and then this one guy gets cut in half. That I mean, was one of the best scenes ever. That was a fucking yeah. amazing one. And, and then when uh he um he he fly uh, you know, he swims really fast towards Mara and Mara's like uh, I forgot what exactly she says, but she puts her hand up and she just like, starts pulling the the water yeah. out of Steppenwolf's face, and she's, then you see some blood come out. She did that to Johnny Depp too. She sucked his will to live <laughs> right out of him. <laughs> Jesus, sucking that money right out of his bank account, boy. <laughs> yeah. 
That was such a good scene. Mm. Jeez, that was such a good scene. Oh my gosh, man. I think that's a huge difference about the whole movie, too. Like, it was more strength. Like, he's like, you're not going to escape. She's like, I'm not trying to. And she stood up for herself. And then um, Aquaman, you know, throws throws a couple punches at him. And then once he gets the mother box, he dips the fuck out. He didn't want any smoke with Aquaman. He got the hell out of there as soon as he could. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I love how... Aquaman is the one that fucking stabs him with a fucking trident at the end. Yeah, yeah. that was sick. Let's let's talk about that final battle, man. That final battle was much better than the first version. Like I just I felt like he did a better job at showing the team like fight like fighting as a team. And then Wonder Woman beheads him before he goes through the yeah. portal. So brutal. And then Darkseid catches his um, his rolling <laughs> head under his foot and then just crunches it. Yes. Yeah. It's not easy. All I kept stepping. thinking about at that point, you know, he, he already looks like a bull. I was like, man, I want some brisket now. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he looked like a bull until uh, Soup's heat visioned off one of his. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe the version that they put out was. He he gets afraid of his own parademons and so yeah. take him so back to a pocket. Put him back yeah, to bed. I was just like, oh, oh, man. Man. that was <laughs> oh, the <my> God. worst. <laughs> well, well, that was, that was the treatment that the internet gave Joss Whedon after the movie came out. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad Doesn't movie. it look like two two like parallel emotions? Like you're fucking enjoying this movie, right? And and then it's like. I can't believe they put that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, that's what I was going through. Like, Do you guys see? God. I had the, Rob Liefeld was fucking going off on how good this movie was. I mean, how that's like the biggest troll ever. So yeah, his, <laughs> his wife that that tweet where his he's saying how his wife is watching it and she goes, "People should be fired for this," and he's like, "They were. <laughs> 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 they have been." I'm, I'm, you know what the thing about this movie is damn now it's made me want more dc movies that's tough man that's that's the bad thing about movies you gotta wait you gotta hope you know it's like when after i saw justice league weed and shit back in the day I'm like man fuck this shit man i was like done with it and now watching this i'm like damn I want the shit to expand now man like martian manhunter what even even if the initial success was enough that Tomorrow, Warner Brothers said, "Okay, Zach, we're gonna have you make the the next part of Justice League." It's still yeah. gonna be three years before we see anything. Yeah, um, I wonder what yeah. these are gonna do, man. Well, it's well, uh... and, you know, I mean, now you're talking about trying to go to Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, and get them to. Dude, you. But if you throw enough money at them. I mean, oh, they've all the, the the one you need the most. Who everyone was skeptic about came back. Affleck came yeah. back, and he 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 put the suit back on, you know, and he did his Look, fucking nightmare scene. He looks so good in that too, man. Yeah. Amazing. He's coming he's back for the Flash movie too. That's right. Yeah, he's he's the, back for the Flash he's movie. He's the most intimidating Batman there's ever been, bro. Like, like you see, he's thick. You know, like it's a big motherfucker, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If- I don't know if this was ever talked, and I'm sure it has. I just don't remember. Um, I saw in a uh, Facebook group, someone, um, they were talking about the nightmare scene. And someone said, hey, um, did anybody think about, or did anybody uh, think about, is the trench coat that he's wearing, could that have been Gordon's? Like he's wearing it as like a... Oh. Yeah, I, I've, I've, see, I've seen that uh, that theory, but I don't know that... Uh... He would fit in Gordon's yeah. French coat. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe his bullocks. May, I was gonna say that. <laughs> man, which told me. Well, that you know, man, that that anyone. Whatever, whatever his name is, Simmons or whatever, that guy, that guy's whack, bro. Every time I see him in in Gotham City Police Department, I think of the Allstate commercials and shit. We like are <laughs> farmers. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, when I hear his voice, I'm like, yo, he's trying hey, to sell you insurance, bro. <laughs> Fucking hey, fuck on. You gotta watch. Uh, what's that? Is it Whiplash? What's that movie where he's a yeah. drum teacher? Yeah, Whiplash. You gotta watch him in that, and then you'll have more respect for him. He's a fucking nutbag in that movie. Sick fucker in Oz too, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Isn't he like bald? And uh, he he's good in uh, I Love You, Man, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I uh, but um, yeah. Like I said, it sucks now because now now I'm thirsty for more movies, and you know you know how that is so. That's tough, man. I, I, I don't have any desire to see any more Jared Leto's Joker, though, man. I, I, he just... 
God, I don't know. Some no. people, some people love him. Some people don't. I, I just, I can't do it, man. He, fucking Jim Carrey, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Let me show you something. A lot of Joker and Suicide Squad, and then when I saw this, it's almost like they got the uh, the Wish version of Jared Leto. Like, I mean, like his voice wasn't even like. It, I don't know. I, he looked like a Joker. I mean, he looked like the Suicide Squad Joker. It, it was nice to see those stupid fucking tattoos off his face, though. That was like, nice. Yeah. But, but the way he talked, even his laugh was like, is this really Leto, or did they just get, you know, the cameraman? So, I don't, the, the like scene a... from the trailer was different from the scene in right. the movie. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah, the, the, uh, the society part was just yeah. like, trolling everyone, apparently. Uh, That's awesome. That's Maybe awesome. we'll get that on the Blu-ray. Maybe. And, uh, and, uh, he's supposedly supposed to. He's supposed to make an announcement about a, a Justice is Gray version, where uh, he had talked to HBO Max about wanting to do like a noir, black and white version originally. He wanted it in black and white, but they were like, "No, nah, dude, you gotta have a color." So, like, all right. So he wants to release. I think that's what's going to be announced. Maybe tomorrow or Monday, but. Uh, Justice is gray. It's like a hashtag right now on uh, on Twitter that he shared with um, Joe mm-hmm. Manganiello. So him and Manganiello are supposed to hop onto uh, mm-hmm. the internet tomorrow to talk about it. Man, my but that's another thing, wasn't isn't it? it? Um, wasn't that scene with Deathstroke and Luther different? Yeah, it was. There was an extended mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. 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 We, we didn't even talk about Deathstroke. I know. No, I, I, Deathstroke. I a movie. Dude, it sucks because I was like. Well, nothing really happened. <laughs> it's and, uh, yeah, like they you had we got to see Lex telling Deathstroke Batman's identity, and yeah. Gramps, Gramps probably knows some of this from from what he got to see. But uh, through more of the story, if it happens, we would find out who told Lex Batman's identity, and that that could set up more things too. Mm. Yeah. Well, hey, really, um, really quick, Gramps. Um, uh, after we get on recording, I want to hear what you're talking about. Sure. And uh, we were always promised that we would get to see the backstory behind, because uh, the first time we ever saw the nightmare footage, we saw the Joker card on Batman's gun. Oh yeah. And they, you know, we were we were told that eventually we would see the backstory to that. Why he yep. had that. That was pretty cool. I'm happy they finally did that. That's a cool. Uh, that's a. Cool thing. That's, that's that's a whole other thing though. The Joker said something about um. I, I forget what he said. I only watched <laughs> the, the reach around. You guys like that part? <laughs> yeah. the reach around. Yeah. I, I think See, he gave him the card. He said, uh, "As long as you keep this card, we'll always have a truce or something." Yeah. No, well, he yeah. said he alluded to Batman being responsible for changing multiverses. Or I don't yeah, know, like yeah. That. He said, yeah. "How many multiverses do you?" In, in how many uh, fucking crazy time time continuities or something do you destroy the world because yeah. you refuse to die? That's fucking nuts. So I, I, before the show, I was uh, watching this video that was speaking about that moment, and there's they have a theory that in that scene, a uh, Joker has the mother box, and that's why he's saying you need me to fix this whole mess. Um. So that that's why that whole scene is kind of um, building up to that. Mm. What that, is Mara? What is Mara holding in the bag when they're walking around? Do they ever show that? She's selling a bootleg DVDs. She's got Aquaman's <laughs> head. DVD, 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 DVD. Make some money. What I thought was cool that Lido had uh, police badges. I assume just yeah, yeah that was cool. GCPD that was... badges or some yeah. shit. Yeah, popular, that, that was pretty sick, actually. That was cool. I think there's also some Metropolis ones there, too. <clears> but <throat> Yeah, they're all police badges. That, they're that all, was... like, covered in blood. Damn, I love shit like that. That's hardcore shit, man. Yeah, uh, I, I, think, uh, I think part of the reason why Batman has finally resolved to, okay, I'm just going to kill this guy, is one, because of Jason Todd, or whether maybe it's Dick Grayson in this world, um, but, you know, killing Robin and... I believe he also killed uh, Jim Gordon. See, now we'll never know because the original Nightmare scene in Batman vs Superman, that girl that was with Batman, she was somebody, and we yeah, still there, was, don't there was three people total. Like what they've shown behind the scenes footage, yeah. and it's two guys on his. I think it might be four, two people on either side. 
Well, Zack yeah, Snyder even him. said that he intended for there to be Kerry Kelly. And... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Damn, bro. Well, I mean, and now I hope... A, I... What, a, a recolored BVS or something updated? Yeah. The uh, Ultimate Edition? Yeah. We'll but, see. But also the question is, at that nightmare scene, how many other people are dead? You know Arthur's dead. Um, yeah, Arthur's dead. Um, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is Lois Lane dead or yeah, yeah Lois is dead. dead, right? Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was holding her body. She been done right. dead, right? And then, and then Barry is also wearing the same suit. He's wearing that armored suit. That's the Iron Man suit, yeah. Iron Man suit that he's uh, <laughs> that that he reveals himself in uh, BVS where he, where he has that premonition. And he's saying like, "Move to the key." Yeah. They're kind of reconnecting that piece again. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. and that's supposed to come back more in the next movie yeah. because we would see what they're exactly doing there. Yeah, so it's, so it's all pretty cool stuff. Snyder said that um, the additional scene that he did, the nightmare scene with Leto and and Batfleck and all that stuff, that that's one scene in this movie, but it's supposed to be the entire movie of Part Two of Justice League. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So he just he didn't know if he'd ever get that's to true. do it, so. Crazy. He put that little. He put that little, little stank on the end there. But it, it, would, it would be very cool to see all the uh, nightmare stuff that we know about out. actually play yeah. out. Yeah. And t- technically, that stroke was in there, and Joe got to play him. So hope yeah. we get to play because <laughs> he yeah. looks. So, he yeah. was fucking awesome. And the the next part of that scene, like you know what what happens in the moments after uh, that nightmare scene ends, would be very cool. Did, did Mera always have a British accent, or is it? Oh, I was wondering that. I, I oh. saw someone talking about that. Yeah, she. It's it's new. <laughs> she okay. she she has it in the scene uh, with with Volko at the beginning, and then she has it at the end. But she, she doesn't has, have it in the Aquaman movie. No, I'll tell you she does not have it for the Aquaman movie, and she does not have it in the Justice League. Well, so maybe she, she just she's, swam she's through like, the British Channel and then she's, like, <laughs> she's like Madonna, you know? She had the where she, where she was lovely. Good. You all. All right, all right, boys. I think it's good. I think we uh, yeah. we covered everything. Um, I hope we this just... is not the last of uh, Snyder the Snyder's movies that we discuss. Yes, um, it was. Uh, I'm happy. Uh, I hope it continues, but at least we got a damn good trilogy out of it. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah. hopefully it continues. You know, this yeah. is you know, like I said before, this is where the real work starts. Before that was all fun and games. Now is where the real work starts. Hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Well, think um, think about it. These, these people are just getting started. Yeah. If we can, if um, if anybody out there can uh, DM us Josh Whedon's home address, that'd be great. <laughs> um, not saying we're going to do anything oh. with it. Uh, <laughs> be nice and clear. But if you have it, send it on over. Tom's putting them on his Christmas card list. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. And the only uh, thing on that list is a bucket of shit. Hey, did anybody notice that when uh, Barry was listing his his skills, his abilities to Bruce, when he says, you know, I know you have abilities, I just don't know what they are, he starts listing off his talents and stuff, and he says, uh, flute and sign language, well, gorilla sign language. <laughs> a little odd reference. <laughs> uh, gorilla grind. Oh, oh yeah, grab. Big, grab, boy. big grab, boy. All right, boys. Justice so, League. So yeah, R. go R. Uh, go watch. Uh, go every, to, to anyone who hasn't seen it. Go uh, subscribe to HBO Max. Watch Justice League, and then watch. Hello. And then if you have HBO Max, you can also watch uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal play a hooker in the seventies. Pretty good on the Deuce. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Master of the Phantasms on there. Well, yeah, I mean, pretty uh, much every DC animated series is on there actually. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I got uh, I got HBO Max and Hulu um, on a free trial, and um, I I have uh, so HBO Max I have a free trial for seven days, and I uh, before watching the Snyder Cut, I turned it on. I'm going through. I'm like, holy shit! Like, I'm willing to even pay a monthly subscription just for HBO Max. So there's Look at that. all the DC movies, all the DC TV shows, all the animated. I'm like, kick ass. Oh, all yeah. you gotta do is not buy figures every week, and then you're good. That's all you gotta do. Is yeah. just think think of how many figures you have to save up for an HBO Max. Because what is it like, twelve ninety nine a month? 
Uh, for the first year, it's like fifteen dollars. Fifteen. Dollars. Okay, it's not bad. A month. That's pretty About good. A month. Yeah. 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 There's so much shit on there too. And yeah. now, doesn't it? Oh no, never mind. That's the Peacock. Some someone has the WWE Network. But anyways, um, we digress. But yeah, all right, boys. Um, that was a good one, ladies and germs. Everybody out there in the uh, ether world, hashtag restore the Snyderverse. I think it was Grandpa Batman that started that hashtag, so let's keep it going, keep it strong. <laughs> and scene.